A bright flash of light awakens Pietro Wilson from his vegetative state. He sits up and brushes the sand off himself, looking around the desolate desert he's found himself in. How did he get here? The last thing he remembers is uncovering secret orders from the leaders of the SCP Foundation, just before they declared war on humanity. Unfortunately, the most important parts of the files had been redacted. Now he's on a mission to finally discover why the SCP Foundation is trying to kill every last human on the planet. But there is something else he has to deal with first. What happened? Pietro says out loud as he looks at his vitals in the heads-up display of SCP-5000. He is still contained within the exclusionary suit that makes him undetectable to human senses. He checks the date and gasps in surprise. Three months? I've been passed out for three months? He stands up and looks across the barren landscape. The screen inside the suit indicates that he has traversed half of the country since he left Site-19 three months ago. Pietro looked down at one of his hands. He is holding a leather briefcase. Where did that come from? He wonders. Pietro has no idea what is inside the briefcase, but he knows it definitely isn't round. He tries to let go. His fingers won't open. He uses his other hand to try and pry the briefcase away from himself, but his hand only clasps to it harder. Then a wave of calm washes over him. Something inside his head speaks to him, but it's not a voice, more like a feeling. It is a sense of purpose, and Pietro's new mission in life is to deliver this briefcase to SCP-579. Nothing else is as important. Pietro Wilson takes a deep breath and embraces his new purpose in life. He still wants to uncover the reason that the SCP Foundation is trying to wipe out humanity, but this will have to wait until he delivers the briefcase to SCP-579. Pietro doesn't know exactly where 579 is located, but he can feel a pull in a certain direction, so he begins to walk. Pietro brings up the information stored in the SCP-5000 suit from the Foundation's database. He finds that all information about what SCP-579 is has been expunged from the record. The only useful information in the file is that the Keter-level SCP is located at Site-62C. At least Pietro has a destination to aim for. He travels for days without seeing a living soul but he does pass thousands of corpses. He tries to ignore them, but one stands out to him inside a house as he searches for supplies. It's the body of a recently deceased boy. He couldn't have been more than eight years old. He was so young, Pietro thinks. He bends over to scoop up the body and bury it outside. As his hand touches the body, the boy's skin begins to move. It is as if hundreds of tiny creatures are scurrying just under the skin. Then, from out of every orifice comes hundreds of little pale worms, each with the face of the boy. They are all cackling as they crawl out of the boy's body and into a drain a few feet away. Pietro jumps back and runs. This is the last person I try to bury, he thinks. Pietro pushes forward, the hundreds of little laughing worms haunting his thoughts, until he puts a significant distance between himself and the little boy's body. Pietro continues to walk towards the direction of Site 62C. He passes more corpses, but decides to stay clear of them. Although the suit makes it so Pietro doesn't need to rest, he can only go so fast. He enters a small, abandoned town that looks like something out of an old western movie. A tumbleweed blows across the dirt road. Pietro sits on the wooden step of the local saloon and takes a break. He looks down at the briefcase in his hand. He hasn't had the urge to open it only to deliver it to SCP-579. Pietro puts the briefcase on his lap. He stares at it and slides his hands along the leather, stops with his thumb on the latch, and pushes. The locks snap open. Pietro opens the briefcase. A bright light beams out, and he passes out. When Pietro comes to again, he is miles closer to Site 62C. There is a warm feeling enveloping his body. He looks down at the briefcase, which is now closed. Wow, this thing is like my own personal skip button, Pietro thinks. He holds up the briefcase, unlatches the locks, sees the bright light, and passes out again. He awakes once again miles away from his last position. So it wasn't just a one-off effect. Pietro continues walking across the country, switching between using his own legs and whatever magic is contained within the briefcase. He is making faster progress now. As he walks through a dense, deciduous forest, he comes across a pack of wolves eating the remains of an SCP agent. Pietro is undetectable to the wolves thanks to the SCP-5000 suit. 
and he makes his way over to the pack, quietly grabbing a laptop laying on the ground next to the agent's body. Pietro takes the laptop and goes away deeper into the forest before stopping to boot up the computer. He has not forgotten about the horrors the SCP Foundation has released, and he needs to know how the world has been doing over the last few months. What he finds is not good. The SCP Foundation has triggered the eruption of Yellowstone, destroying SCP-2000, which, unknown to Pietro, contained the failsafe for rebuilding human society in the event of a world-ending scenario, which this was starting to look more and more like. It was only a matter of time now before the soot and ash thrown up by the eruption blocks out the sun in much of what is left of the United States. The Foundation has also found a way to get SCP-2241 to do their dirty work at refugee camps. The young brown-haired boy is most likely being manipulated by the Foundation under the pretense that they are only doing what is best for their child. He has caused whole groups of refugees to turn on each other, leading to a massacre. The last entry says that the young boy is being sent to the Global Occult Coalition holdout in Ganzir to help destroy some of the last threats to the SCP Foundation. A series of other SCPs have been dispatched by the Foundation around the world to continue the destruction of humanity. They even managed to use temporal anomalies to make it Christmas time everywhere around the world. So SCP-4666, the brutal Yuletide creature that stalks the homes of children, is free to cause chaos. Pietro had seen enough. He slams the laptop shut, throws it against the trunk of a tree, and opens the briefcase again. He awakes, standing feet away from a group of Global Occult Coalition soldiers who are sitting around a campfire. Maybe they know why the SCP Foundation is trying to end the world, he thinks. He decides that it is too risky to show himself to the soldiers, but takes some solace in sitting around the campfire with other living humans. The soldiers are sharing stories about what is happening. One catches the attention of Pietro Wilson. It is strange but also may hold a clue as to why the SCP Foundation is trying to wipe out humanity. One of the soldiers recounts an event that he witnessed before leaving the Global Occult Coalition's headquarters at Genzir. They had just captured an SCP soldier trying to break into the base. The infiltrator's name was Samuel Ross. He had been strapped into an interrogation chair and questioned. The interviewers were not getting anywhere until Ross was threatened with torture, to which he responded, do what you want. Once you realize you're not supposed to feel pain, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Pietro sits up straight and starts to listen more intently. He remembers stumbling across SCP soldiers on his way to Site-19 that exhibited the same no-pain mentality that this Samuel Ross seems to have. After that odd statement by Samuel Ross, there was the sound of wind. It started slow at first, then ramped up until it was howling like a hurricane. That's when the screaming started. The screams became louder and climbed to a higher pitch. Then the room went dead silent. The last thing that Samuel Ross said was, Look what you've done to yourselves. I told you you wouldn't like it, didn't you? That's why you hear your voice. But you wanted to know so badly. I really liked you guys, so I was trying to be nice. We're so kind to you, you know. We fight in the light, so you can die in the dark. Hmm, <laughs> disgusting. Pietro sits back on his haunches and rocks back and forth. He has an ominous feeling that there is a connection between the missing pain of the SCP soldiers and the reason why the Foundation declared war on humanity. The soldier who told the story of Samuel Ross stands up. After that interview is when the destruction of Genzir started from the inside. It is why the Global Occult Coalition is no more. God help us all. The soldier finished with his story, turns from the others and starts to walk away. As the soldier makes his way towards the woods, Pietro can just barely make out that he's taken his pistol from his holster before he disappears into the darkness. The world truly has gone mad. Pietro opens the briefcase and blacks out. Pietro sluggishly continues his walk. He's moving down a rocky path in the middle of the forest, and his will to keep going is slowly being drained. The only reason he has not sat down and given up is because of the driving urge to get the briefcase to 579. He wants so badly to concentrate and discover the reason that the Foundation released the SCPs on humanity, but the need to reach 579 won't let him focus on anything else. 
He's noticed, though, that every time he opens the briefcase to skip ahead, he makes less and less progress. The warm feeling of the first few transports has been replaced by a nauseated headache every time he comes out of the trance. Pietro exits the forest into an open field. The wind blows across the high grass looking like green waves, and standing scattered throughout the field are statues. As Pietro approaches, he sees that they are statues of Mobile Task Force Foundation soldiers. He slowly walks closer to the white marble statues. He reaches the first one and looks at the face of the frozen soldier. His eyes have been scooped out. All that remains are black, empty sockets. The arms of the soldier have been carved into blades, like a praying mantis. He walks past the first statue and proceeds to the next one, where he hears something move in the grass behind him. He spins around to look at the statue. He could have sworn it was in a slightly different position. No, that's crazy, Pietro thinks. He continues to the next statue. It is another carving of an MTF soldier. No eyes, blades for arms. This is really creepy, Pietro says aloud. He proceeds through the field. He walks up a slight hill and turns around to look at the field of statues. What he sees is terrifying. The statues have all moved and are now in different positions. It appears as if they were slashing through the area looking for something or someone. Pietro continues over the hill and comes upon a group of refugees. They are picking through the field looking for food to eat. A fog begins to move in. It is being swept across the meadow by the wind. Pietro watches from a distance as the fog envelops the small group. Suddenly there is screaming and the sound of blades going through flesh. The screams cease almost immediately. Pietro runs down the hill to where the refugees were. The fog lifts. The group of people have been cut to pieces. Standing in the middle of the carnage is one of the MTF soldier statues, blood dripping from its blade arms. Pietro knows what to do. He runs. After a few miles, Pietro slows to catch his breath. Those statues must have been created by the Foundation, he thinks. It's as if they are frozen in place. But as soon as you take your eyes off them, they can move with killer speed. Even in the suit, my eyesight can stop them but they can't see me. They must know I'm there though since they can't move. Pietro Wilson opens the briefcase once again, for what he didn't know would be the last time. When he comes to this time, he is near Site 62C. He can feel himself being pulled stronger than ever in the direction of his destination. He walks down a deserted road past the husks of burnt vehicles and at the end is the gate to Site 62C. There are no guards or security of any kind, it looks like the site has been abandoned for a long time, and the gate is wide open, beckoning Pietro Wilson into Site 62C, where SCP-579 waits. Pietro Wilson enters the dark hallway he somehow knows leads down into the crypt of Site 62C. The walls drip with what he hopes is water from leaking pipes, but it has a metallic smell, and is much too red to actually be water. He begins to feel nauseous, it gets harder to breathe. Even the SCP-5000 suit can't keep him calm. He turns and runs back up the stairs out of Site 62C. Pietro begins to sob uncontrollably, as the memories of everything that has happened over the past several months suffocates his will to go on. Then, as if an invisible force that refuses to let him go takes control. Pietro feels as if a gun has been shoved into the small of his back. He is being sent back into Site 62C, whether he wants to go or not. He is unsure if what is forcing him back into the base is inside the briefcase, his own uncontrollable urge to know what is going on, or SCP-579 itself, but he cannot stop himself from re-entering the doorway and proceeding into Site 62C. He doesn't know what SCP-579 looks like, but Pietro has a sinister feeling that it is watching him. He reaches the bottom of the stairway and proceeds down a dark hallway, the power went out a long time ago, and the only light in the depths of Site 62C is the dim glow coming from the helmet of the SCP-5000 suit. Pietro notices long gashes along the concrete walls, as if someone took a giant knife and dragged it from one end of the hallway to the other. There is something at the end of the corridor that Pietro can't make out. As he gets closer, the lights on the SCP-5000 suit begin to flicker. The thing at the end of the hallway seems to move slightly each time the lights on the suit dim. The lights on the suit go out completely, 
and the entire hallway is plunged into darkness. Only for a second, though, and when the lights come back on, a statue of an MTF soldier looms over Pietro. Its eyes are empty sockets, its lips are turned up in a snarl, the arms have been filed into blades. No! Pietro screams. He dodges around the statue. The moment it is out of his sight, he hears the sound of blades on concrete. As the statue of the soldier comes to life and begins slashing its way down the hallway, it cannot see Pietro, but it knows he is there. It slashes all around, trying to connect with whoever is there with it. Pietro runs to the end of the hallway and reaches a door. He presses against the heavy metal door to open, straining against its weight all while the blind statue is still slashing, coming closer and closer. The door is almost open, but then Pietro feels a blade lacerate the back of the suit, cutting deeply into the skin of his back, missing his spinal cord by millimeters. Another blade enters through the back of his shoulder, piercing straight through. He somehow pulls himself through the cracked doorway and kicks the metal door shut behind him. He can hear the banging and scraping of blades outside the metal door. The creature has not given up and is trying to break in. Pietro turns around to see he is in an observation chamber full of instruments and screens. Blood runs down his back from the wounds inflicted by the statue. He walks slowly over to the window. On the desk in front of him is a file labeled SCP-579. He looks through the observation glass and down into the chamber below. It is too dark to make anything out, but Pietro can feel that SCP-579 is down there looking up at him. Pietro looks to his left and sees a hole in the floor. He walks over and looks down, and leads right into the containment chamber of 579. Let's get this over with, Pietro says out loud. He holds the briefcase over the hole and tries to open his hand. His finger won't budge. SCP-579 wants him to hand deliver the briefcase. Pietro Wilson takes a deep breath, closes his eyes, and steps into the opening of the hole. He falls. In the moments before he lands in SCP-579's containment chamber, something comes to him. He realizes that he isn't going to be a hero. He isn't going to figure out why the SCP Foundation is trying to wipe out humanity, and he isn't going to survive. He lands hard on the ground below. It is completely dark, except for a shadow that moves in the corner of the containment chamber. Pietro Wilson creates one last log. If anyone ever reads this, please, please figure out why. Explain it to me. Someone. Anyone. I don't get it. I just don't get it. SCP-579 steps into the glow that the SCP-5000 suit is giving off. Pietro Wilson looks up at it. Oh, so that's how it is. He says before SCP-5000 creates its final log. Life signs, lost. Vital signs, lost. SCP-5000 appeared in a flash of light in the containment chamber of SCP-579, located in Site-62C. The researchers monitoring SCP-579 had no idea where the suit came from, or why it contained the body of Pietro Wilson, a Foundation employee who is assigned to Site-06 and is very much alive. Wilson appears to have no knowledge of SCP-5000, or memories of the events logged in SCP-5000's databanks. Although the suit is believed to have been capable at one point of a number of anomalous functions and abilities, the damage it has sustained has rendered it inoperable, except for the storage of data files, which now have been archived and stored on secure Foundation servers. Still have questions about SCP-5000 and what really happened? Well, we've got a surprise for you. Go watch SCP-5000, The Story Explained, available right now to get the story behind the story of Pietro Wilson and the SCP Foundation's plan to destroy the world.